are in listen-only mode. Hey, good morning this morning. Wanted to welcome you all for joining us this morning. Uh, I do have Brett Walterbach with uh, Voya Financial with us this morning. I will be going through some uh, webinar slides. Uh, first thing, I wanted to welcome you to Insurance Agency Marketing Services. Uh, we have been in business now for over 30 years. My name is Marcus uh, Solar. I am an annuity director of sales uh, here at Insurance Agency Marketing Services. We will be covering uh, with uh, Brett this morning, the art of the rollover and Voya's new journey product uh, are covering some high aspects of that product as well. Uh, we do have a lot of information to cover this morning. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Uh, as we cover a lot of information this morning, uh, we will open up the uh, question and answer uh, block down in the right hand corner of your screen. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions as we do go along. Uh, we will also be asking some polls as we go along. So if you are interested in any, in any of the topics that we do cover this morning, uh, please uh, answer those polls. I will be following up with each and every one of you after the uh, webinar this morning uh, to go into greater detail on any of the topics that we do uh, cover in the uh, topics uh, discussed in the webinar this morning. Again, want to thank you for taking time out this morning. I know each and every one of you are very busy. Uh, you do have clients coming in and uh, going out of the office. This is going to be a recorded webinar. Uh, so if you do have a client come in or do miss uh, part of this webinar this morning, uh, please uh, indicate that to me. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and get you out a copy of the webinar uh, so you can go back and uh, watch it at your own convenience. Uh, again, welcome to Insurance Agency Marketing Services. We do offer what we call a new producer bonus program. This is good for uh, any new production, uh, for any new producer that comes on board with us. It is good for annuity or single premium life production. It is good for the first 180 days. It's a way for us to say thank you and welcome aboard to Insurance Agency Marketing. We do have three separate levels of the program. Uh, you can claim your um, item. At any level, once you do claim an item, uh, that uh, program is shut off, uh, but you can choose anything from a, a two-year subscription uh, to a website or newsletter service at a $100,000 level, all the way to a 4,000-piece mailing and seminar coaching with Dave Pimper, or 5,000-piece mailing and seminar coaching with Matt Gill. Uh, so whether you do 100,000 in production, whether it's annuity or, or single premium life production, 300,000 or 500,000 within the first six months of you uh, being contracted with us. Uh, this is a way, again, for us to say thank you uh, and welcome aboard. Let's help you get a uh, good start uh, and uh, look forward to a long uh, relationship with you and, and building your practice. We also have a uh, top producer's escape trip. Uh, this one's going to be in 2018. It is going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, at the Boulders Resort and Spa. You can certainly qualify for this with any combination of either annuity premium, single premium, life premium, uh, life target, uh, Medicare or long-term care premium, or any combination of there. Uh, and it is $2 million in annuity premium to qualify for that trip. Uh, beautiful location. It's going to be held, obviously, February 25th through the 28th and that's going to be held in Scottsdale, Arizona. The qualification period for that trip runs all the way from July 1st of 2016 all the way through December 31st of 2017. Uh, so we still have plenty of time for those that are interested in attending to qualify for that trip. And it is a good way to uh, meet the best of the best, some of the top producers in the industry, spend some time with them, learn what works for them, how they keep their pipelines full, uh, and really uh, jumpstart your practice uh, and really grow your practice and build those relationships with those advisors for many, many years to come. We do also have our creator services area. This is our marketing uh, department. Our marketing department is unique to the industry. They can certainly help you uh, in many different aspects, no matter where you are within your practice. They can help you with compliant mailer creation and uh, lead generation marketing. 
They can help you with a marketing fundamentals package, whether it's logo, business card, letterhead, envelope, or brochures, all the way to custom image branding, uh, which is print advertising, video, uh, customized web presence, uh, copywriting and editing, uh, TV and radio advertising, or any additional image branding or collateral material. Uh, they can certainly take that to uh, a top level, which is uh, media negotiation and buying, or annual client management, and calendar uh, planning as well. So again, no matter where you are within your practice, uh, our marketing team is uh, great in helping you achieve that next level uh, and uh, helping you market and brand with collateral uh, material, uh, keeping that clear, concise uh, message out there in front of your prospects and current book of business alike. We do have our insurance uh, email newsletters. Uh, what we have found is uh, a majority of clients and prospects out there, or 86% of internet users age 65 and older, uh, use email. So our uh, marketing area can certainly help you with uh, website lead forms, whether they tie back to either uh, your websites. Uh, we do have client management tools, uh, email newsletters. We do offer this as a additional value add to folks that are licensed through insurance agency marketing services as a 30-day free trial and an ongoing service to our advisors. If you have questions on this, you can certainly uh, call in to our uh, marketing area, which is 800-255-5055, and certainly ask to speak to uh, Josh in our marketing area, and he would be more than happy to answer any additional questions for you. Uh, with regards to either the client management tools or the uh, website lead forms or email newsletters. We do offer an industry-recognized insurance agency marketing services, Life and Annuity Academy. Our next uh, Life and Annuity Academy that we have scheduled is going to be actually on September 6th, 7th, and 8th. It's actually going to be held at our home office in Omaha, Nebraska. This is going to be a two-day training session. Uh, we're going to be covering not only sales ideas and strategies from four of our top producers. Uh, we're going to be uh, you know, talking about index annuities unraveled. Uh, we're going to be talking about wealth transfer tools. Uh, I'm going to throw a poll out there because this is a uh, event that is going to be all costs are going to be covered by insurance agency marketing services. Um, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, been holding this for uh, many, many years. Uh, it is a way really to leapfrog your business. Uh, we're going to be talking about some of the best income writers out there, uh, some of the so sales software tools like Retirement Analyzer, uh, which is a needs-based uh, uh, selling approach uh, to help recommend the best solutions in the industry for your clients. Uh, we're going to be talking about the newest industry threats and trends uh, and a lot of uh, carriers, some of the best income riders out there, single premium life options, long-term care options for your clients. Uh, and some of our top producers are going to be coming in, sharing what they what is working for them from a prospecting standpoint, uh, whether that's seminars or lead mailers, uh, to help give you a little bit of insight on industry trends that they see uh, and uh, what they can do to help you and your practice grow. Again, that's going to be September 6th, 7th, and 8th. Again, I've opened the poll. If you're interested in coming out or learning more about this next event, uh, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to follow up with you with some more additional information about the up-and-coming event. But this is an industry-recognized event. Uh, we typically hold this three or four times a year. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that poll. I certainly do appreciate you filling that out. We do have paperless contracting here at Insurance Agency Marketing. Uh, this does save quite a bit of time. Uh, it is uh, and helps our advisors be a lot more efficient. Uh, once you do fill out the paperless contracting, you don't typically have to fill out uh, new paper uh, contracting for each and every carrier. It's all done electronically going forward. Uh, so it uh, really helps our advisors from a timing standpoint. Uh, we do offer our website, 
Uh, it is www.iamsinc.com. It allows our advisors to go out, uh, whether you're looking at a term quarter for term life insurance, uh, it is available 24-7. Uh, it does have uh, annuity rates, uh, an annuity income rider quote tool out there as well. So if you're meeting with a client on the weekend and they're looking for a lifetime income, they do have a uh, quarter tool out there that you can go out and take a look at. We do have industry links, uh, current annuity news, annuity grids, long-term care product grids, a great uh, quick reference tool for you to go out, take a look at. And uh, if you need additional information, we do have a mobile application as well. We do have opened uh, insurance agency, marketing services, uh, wealth management. Uh, this uh, is a great additional tool that we have brought to the table and just recently uh, made available to our advisors. What we have found is it uh, has increased revenue for our advisors that have joined the firm. Uh, it does offer managed money, uh, fees, recurring revenue for them. Typically, most advisors have seen an uh, increase in their fixed insurance revenue as well uh, because of the uh, two-tiered or two-grid payout system. It has improved uh, a lot of the client retention as well uh, because you're now available to offer a full range of the products and services, which is unique to a lot of different uh, programs and hierarchies out there within the wealth management services arena. Uh, and it uh, really has strengthened a lot of those client uh, relationships as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offer one more poll here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch to see how many of you would like some more information on insurance agency marketing services wealth management. Uh, uh, if you would, please uh, let us know. I will certainly have uh, Charles uh, Herring uh, Jr. Uh, give you a call. Uh, he would uh, be able to answer any additional questions for you if you're interested in possibly looking at or attaining your Series 65 license. Uh, he can certainly answer any questions with regards to that as, as, as well. We do offer through our office, as I touched on earlier at our uh, industry-recognized event, uh, we do touch on the Retirement Analyzer software. This is uh, planning software uh, that you can offer to your clients. Uh, it is free to uh, agents that are licensed through insurance agency marketing services. It is a great tool that helps you sit down with each and every client, build that foundation of trust with those clients, help them determine whether or not they can continue to live their pr present uh, standard of living into the retirement years, um, or when can they safely retire without running out of money. It is a great tool to let them uh, take the ideas out of their head actually put them down on paper based on their assumptions, their interest rates, uh, and see if their plan is actually going to play out or not. Um, and then go back and make recommendations, uh, life changes, um, kids in school, whatever the changes might be in the future, uh, put those into the plan, help them uh, make those changes. Uh, and that's something you can go back to your clients either on an annual basis or semi-annual basis and show them what changes what effects that has on their overall plan. And it's very easy to understand, very easy to follow. And that's what a lot of clients and advisors really enjoy about that program. Again, this is something we offer as an additional value add for advisors that are licensed through insurance agency marketing services. We do have our Easy Money Now, which is our referral producer program and our marketing reimbursement accounts. Uh, our referral producer program, basically for those advisors that refer agents to us, when your referral contracts with us, you get $50. Uh, when your referral does business with us, you get $100. And uh, as your referral continues to write business through our office, and here's an example, if you have three referrals that do a million dollars in business, that's an extra $6,000 in your pocket. Some of my advisors, take that money in turn and that pays for their marketing budget on an ongoing basis so they don't have to pay additional money out of pocket to market their firms on an ongoing annual basis. We also have our marketing reimbursement account. Uh, we pay $200 in marketing reimbursement for every $100,000 in premium 
whether that is annuity premium or single premium life premium. And that goes into account for to help you offset any additional costs within your practice because we understand here uh, how expensive it, it is to run your practice day in and day out. So with that, uh, if there's no other questions at this point in time, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Brett at this point so we can certainly get into the information about the rollovers and the uh, uh, Voya uh, uh, journey product as we uh, have a lot of information to cover there on the art of the rollover. Uh, so Brett, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. All right, thank you very much, Marcus, appreciate that. Uh, again, good morning, everybody. My name is Brett Walderbach, and I'm your uh, speaker here with Voya Financial today. I'm one of our wholesalers for our national accounts. Um, and one of the things I want to talk about is a concept to help you continue to try to capture assets uh, that are out there in the marketplace, specifically uh, the rollover and those rollover dollars out there. So I've got a quick disclosure for you, and then we'll jump right into our presentation. So when it comes to your clients investing for retirement, they have a lot of questions. You know, will I have enough for retirement? How will my taxes impact uh, my nest egg? Uh, what if my uh, investment objectives change? Or what is even the right investment for me? So a big reason for why they have a lot of questions is because when you look at the dates and the information on the slide, there has been a shift, a major shift from pension plans that provide an employee with guaranteed income for retirement uh, to the individual now bearing that responsibility of not only investing for retirement, but finding the right investment solution to really help meet their needs once they are in retirement. Because of the shift, IRAs have become the largest portion of assets in the last 40 years, and it represents a large opportunity for you and your clients. So this is a really nice timeline here um, of how, that, how those dollars have increased in the amount of assets out there. Because the IRA market makes up the biggest portfolio for retirement classes, uh, you can see here in the survey, it has estimated that uh, the new IRA rollover contribution will continue to increase. And here are some of the numbers that really project that. So you can see in 2016, uh, 432.2 million and projected IRA or an actual IRA assets. Uh, this year, that's going to grow uh, to four, uh, four, uh, 452.5 million. Uh, the projection for next year, 473.3 million. 2019, 494.8 million. And then in 2020, 516.9 million, or sorry, billion. All those are in billions and those assets that are in the marketplace. So huge, huge opportunity for you uh, to really grow your business by being able to help capture those effectively. So when you look at the new annual IRA contribution growth rate, and then you look at the overall IRA growth rate itself, you quickly see that there is really a huge opportunity when it comes to helping current and future clients with their IRA rollovers. So that really leads to the question, why move the assets into an IRA? So you have the convenience of having the accounts in one place. You gain access to a wider range of investment choices. You gain the tax deferral benefits, or you, sorry, you re, uh, retain the tax deferral benefits, um, the potential for multi-generational planning, Roth IRA conversions opportunity, and easier access to their assets if needed. So while rollover certainly can be a great opportunity for many individuals, there are a few things to consider before rolling money into an IRA. So here are these considerations, investment options, fees and expensive, services provided, um, is there withdrawal penalties, is there creditor protection, required minimum distribution, maybe there's employer stock. So these are just some of those top things to be considering when you're about to make those decisions with your clients. So we saw a few slides ago that the retirement market includes a lot of opportunities when it comes to IRA rollovers. So let's talk about different market opportunities by starting with job changers. So job changers are defined as an individual with more than uh, 10 years before their retirement. So here are some career changing statistics. So the average number of jobs held between the ages of 18 to 48 
is 11. And I have to tell you, I'm way behind the curve on that one. So the average number of jobs held between ages 40 and 48 is two. And the percent of jobs lasting uh, you know, five years between the age of uh, 40 and 48, which is 69%. So you can see that you know when there's a lot of job changers, there's a lot of assets that sometimes are are assumed that are just kind of gone. So don't assume that just because the client no longer works with an employer, and this probably isn't new to you, that doesn't mean that those assets are gone. Fifty percent of the individuals uh, leave their 401k assets behind them when they leave that employer. So for, while 42 percent roll the assets to an IRA and eight percent take a lump sum. Uh, whether if it's an installments or a combination of the lump sum and installment of those two. The assets are not gone. They just don't always know where they are. So it's important to start asking all the clients or start asking all clients if they have old plans with the previous employer. Do they know anyone uh, that's got, a, you know, that's changed jobs or had a couple of new jobs? Because that's a great referral opportunity. So to take a better understanding of that previous slide and what it means for you, let's take a look at the, you know, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. For men ages 18 to 30, they held about eight jobs on average. From 30 to 48, they held between three and four jobs on average. That means this is a good chance if you're working with a male between the ages of 30 and 48, they have accumulated assets and qualified plans with former employers, and there is a 50% chance that those assets are with those former employers. So and if you look out here at the slide as well, the numbers are slightly better if you are working with a female between 38 and 41. So why do 50% of the assets stay with the former employer? Well, you can see here, um, you know, 81.8%. It's easier just to leave them in that current plan. Looks like it's also easier maybe sometimes to kind of forget about that that plan's even out there. So 45 and a half percent, you know, not really clear on how to transfer the assets. Maybe there's just a lack of time or really a lack of really communication on what to do with it. They, they just, you know, they just leave or they just separate. Maybe they got laid off or downsized. So this is why it, if you started to work with a new client who has changed job within the last few years, statistically speaking, you have a really good opportunity um, with them that they may need to move some assets around. And they might just, you know, really have needed some help and don't really know where to turn. So how do you identify, you know, the job changers? Well, there's a lot of great ways now. Social media um, has been huge. And if any of you, you know, subscribe to LinkedIn, uh, you always get an alert or a notification if someone in your network is celebrating either an anniversary or maybe they start a new job, ask you to congratulate them. So that's an easy way to identify job changers. Um, existing clients during those annual reviews, it's a great opportunity just to ask some questions about kind of that, their network base and, you know, kind of what's going on in their life. Maybe they have changed jobs. Maybe their spouse changed job or they had a family member. So maybe they're starting a family business. Uh, you just don't know. Uh, with prospects, you know, going back to some of those statistics, how many of those, you know, prospects have had some job changes in the, in the last, you know, five years, maybe eight years? And then there's obviously been, you know, a lot of talk, especially, you know, in the national news about, you know, companies that have downsized, doing layoffs, restructuring. So this is probably one of the most difficult um, opportunities to pursue because you're approaching someone um, that is really in some difficult times in your life. No one likes to be laid off or fired. It can be very stressful at, at times. But what it does is it presents an opportunity for you to provide guidance and help and let them know that you're there for them, really being that, that wing of support. So if you know that the client has lost their job and they're looking for a new career or even retiring early, eventually they're going to need help moving assets around uh, by reaching out to them um, and really just providing them an opportunity to talk on, on what, can, what can be there. You, know, you even have social circles where you know that um, they could have someone that's you know, looking uh, you know, for work that they have experience in. So, but you're there as someone that can help them down the road and it can really be a great opportunity for you as well. So let's take a look at another market. Now that we've talked about the job changers, you know, it's really that pre-retiree. So the pre-retiree is defined as those individuals who are less than 10 years from retirement. So recommending rollovers, you know, someone from a, uh, a plan participant that's leaving has four options. 
They can leave the money with the plan if it's permitted. You know, they can roll over into a new plan so that the employer offers, um, or they, you know, if it's permitted too, uh, they can completely, you know, cash out that account value, or they can switch it into that to an IRA also within uh, whoever the the fund manager or the uh, the third party administrator has available too as well. So let's look at some of the mandatory triggering options available in a 401k. You know, these plans, you know, start to identify you know, pre-retirees as a great opportunity for capturing those rollover dollars. Individuals are able to withdraw money from a 401k plan upon reaching triggering events such as like a separation of service, death, disability, um, attainment of normal retirement age. Um, you know, state of retirement ages will vary from plan generally starting at 59 and a half and 65. Also, age 59 and a half, you know, when you look at some of those profit sharing stock bonus plans, if clients have assets with previous employers that are there, uh, it's a great opportunity to start looking at reasons to put that into an IRA and get them out of that plan. So when it comes to those pre-retirees, another you know, possibility for IRA rollovers is the in-service distribution. So what is an in-service distribution? Well, it's really the ability to transfer assets from an employee-sponsored plan into a personal investment, such as an IRA. So some of the benefits from that is, again, what we talked about earlier, wider range of investment choices, more control over your investments and your assets, being able to do some of those Roth conversions. So, you know, get an early jump on implementing, you know, specific um, investment strategies for retirement. And then maybe taking a look at some more tactical or sophisticated investment strategies. So one question that gets asked a lot is, you know, how would I, you know, how would I know if my client offers, their employer, sorry, offers an in-service distribution? Well, a lot of times you can just easily obtain um, a plan description. A client can ask, or sorry, your client can ask their employer um, to get that information uh, as long as they're provided, you know, a reasonable time frame. So another opportunity is also inherited IRAs. You know, unfortunately, death is um, inevitable and it happens you know, prior to people retiring at times as well. The question becomes, then what are you gonna be able to do to help those clients and their inherited assets from someone who has passed away? More importantly, how can you help them when it comes to inherited IRAs? So it's really understanding the rules, how to minimize the taxes. Um, is there distribution options for spouses? Is there distribution options for non-spouses? Um, how to make, you know, really avoid those costly mistakes? Um, and how to get the most out of that inherited IRA. And I don't know how well known this is, but not only with the inherited IRA, but the inherited, um, you know, non-qualified, VOIA has the ability to offer stretches for both, you know, spousal and non-spousal inside there, and also being able to go to a second generation stretch as well. And that's a huge benefit because there's not a lot of companies out there that can really help minimize the taxation as it's passing through generations. So sometimes you can defer the payment over five years where you have to at least get it all out of there within five years. Maybe you'll do a five-year payment plan um, and you're going to pay a greater sum of that where you can take an RMD on those qualified plans or you can take a life expectancy distribution on those non-qualified plans. So something to keep note of on really, you know, why you even want to consider looking at Voya from a product standpoint outside this presentation. So since we've already talked about job changers, let's now focus on the early retirees. Anyone born from 1943 to 1959 will reach full retirement age at age 66. Anyone born on or after 1960 will reach full retirement age at 67. So if half of Americans retire between 61 and 65, what that means is statistically is that 50% of your clients and prospects who are born between 1952 and 1956 will be retiring soon. So if you have not talked with them recently, now is a really good time to get in there, schedule a full review, and possibly adjust the retirement plan. What it also means is that 50% of Americans retire between ages uh, 61 and 65. So talking about retirement planning, social security strategies, you know, will be what will be the best for them, those need to happen sooner than later to help them maximize their retirement income. So what type of opportunities are out there? You know, pre-retirees, you know, face a number of critical planning issues. So if you can meet their needs, you can stand the chance of retaining them uh, as a client into retirement. Here are some of the ways uh, that you can help them right now. Conducting a social security meeting or an event, 
um, suggesting legacy generational planning, maximizing their qualified retirement plans, uh, developing appropriate investment strategies, uh, understanding catch-up provisions and qualifications, uh, educating them about penalty-free distribution, as well as you know, asset consolidation and Roth IRA possibilities. So the last group of individuals are the current retirees. So these are defined as those individuals just retiring or already retired or really planning that retirement right now. So today, people are retiring at an epic rate of 10,000 people per day retiring. Here's some of the numbers when it comes to the retirement marketplace. So again, we mentioned today that number is 10,000 per day, and that's as of 2015. So with a total of uh, 49.5 million retirees. So the projections are crazy here. You know, 11,000 a day in 2021 and 2025, 66 million retired people. Uh, and 2035, 78 million. And then by 2050, we're looking at 25,000, or sorry, we're looking at 12,000 people a day retiring. So again, your opportunity is huge, especially uh, if you're a younger professional in the business. Then once retirement, once in retirement, 65% of individuals will stay with the same financial professional in retirement as compared to pre-retirees where 75% added or changed the financial professionals in the 15 years prior to them retiring. So let's look at that again. Once in retirement, 65% of the individuals stay with the same financial professional. And then pre-retirees, 75% of the time are changing or adding a financial professional. So once clients retire, they have really identified the professional that they're most comfortable with and will tend to remain with them. So what about the other 35%? there is a huge opportunity among current retirees to help them with their retirement needs. Some of those needs could be rolling into assets, maybe open up a new IRA account, um, but you know, really those st statistics are staggering. So retirees, similar to the other two segments we've talked about, are facing their own issues, which creates a lot of opportunity again for you to create comprehensive retirement income planning, develop sustainable withdrawal strategies, maximizing tax efficiency of retirement income sources, exploring solutions for asset prevention and legacy planning, simplify complex estate planning issues, offer multi-generational planning services, and then provide um, you know, RMD strategies that are most effective for them. And I apologize, I'm not sure why that's not coming up on the screen. There we go. So when it comes to helping clients with their assets and you know the value you provide, so here are just some of the uh, the words that were described um, in an IRI magazine of the ten benefits of working with financial professionals: significantly help their savings more, better planning behaviors, more retirement income, uh, more financial education and guidance, greater use of retirement savings vehicles, more likely to contribute to a retirement savings plan and they better understand their investment performances. So let's take a look at a case study now. So we've talked about really those major demographics that you could be working with to help seize those opportunities and the rollover. So let's take a look at a hypothetical case study of a 66-year-old female who has recently retired, needs help moving assets into an IRA, and working with her financial professional, it has been determined that she will need about $40,000 annually and her retirement. Her social security benefit of 24,564 in annual income, so that's a portion of it, in order to reach 40,000, um, she will need an additional $15,436 from other sources. So fortunately, she has been able to save, you know, in her company's 401k, you know, as that is accumulated to over $350,000. So she was also able to put away a little extra into a traditional IRA, which is now worth 82,000. So there's over you know, 400,000, almost 500,000 in assets here uh, that she really has to work with. So let's start to look at some opportunities and what we could look at for this client. So an option for her is with talking with her financial professional has been determined that with her conservative risk tolerance, 
and the need of income that she cannot outlive, based on their conversation, it was determined that she could roll qualified assets into any one of the Voya Quest family of index annuity products. And in that first contract year, she can activate the Voya My Benefit Withdrawal Rider and generate $17,994 worth of annual income. So the Voya My the Voya My Income Withdrawal Benefit allows the benefit base to roll up at a six and a half percent for up to ten years if she would like to defer it. Otherwise, she can activate it immediately and start to use that income for that longer duration of time. So one of the greatest features about our product is no minimum wait. So once you have that 30-day free look period, that thing is you know turned on and ready to go if you need it to be. So and then her remaining accumulation value still has the ability to participate to the indexes and have growth. So if you remember the hypothetical example, we didn't touch the traditional IRA at all in this scenario. So, and then based on the retirement income need, we were able to use the 350,000 by placing that into, again, any one of the Quest products, activating it right away, and being able to get that income uh, at that $17,994 level, which gives her access income of about an additional $2,558. So now we also have that emergency bucket in that 40 or the IRA of 82,000 that can be saved for emergency funding, used to buy maybe additional life insurance, put into a health savings account, or it, just can, it can be just left to where it is to continue to grow. So another option is to consider is since we didn't use any of the traditional IRA assets uh, from the previous example, is we could take withdrawals from that 82,000 and defer that my income benefit that we talked about. Let that roll up at the six and a half percent guaranteed compounded rate. So, and then we can generate even greater income depending on when she would like to use it. And this is just a nice example of, of the impact of the six and a half percent roll up and the increasing payout calculation every year it's deferred as well. You really have two things going, uh, you know, going to work for you inside of that income benefit product that we offer. So we have talked about a lot of information, covered a lot of, a lot of good information about job changers, pre-retirees, and retirees. As we end this discussion, here are some thoughts on how you might mine your book of business and ways to attract new clients. So annual client reviews, capture their full career history, if there's been any recent layoffs, downsizing, um, maybe if for attracting new clients, uh, solicit rollover referrals. This presentation that I have is a rep presentation for you to educate you on this. We have a full seminar prepackaged kit from invites and everything uh, to attract people, whether it's to this type of presentation on helping them seize the role opportunities guided to your clients. Maybe it's our social security. Maybe it's our behavioral finance that we covered last year uh, with these webinars. So that's a great way to attract new clients. Pre-retirees, talk to them about those catch-up provisions, um, you know, conceptual um, you know, ideas that can offer them, you know, concentrate on maybe some of their specific employers um, and what their plans offer them. So we do have a piece that's called Let's Talk In Service Distribution. That's a great way to have that conversation. For attracting new clients, you know, develop plans, uh, develop a plan of expertise looking at some of those large employers. So I'm being able to get inside there, maybe leverage some resources. Maybe you can uh, get a referral from a client of what their employer um, and doing a complimentary review of some of the 401ks for the coworkers. Uh, retirees, looking at those um, personal retirement income analysis uh, for all the retirees um, and providing some support and administration around the required minimum distributions. And then for attracting new clients, doing some of those retirement income seminars. Again, have a full package seminar uh, essentially in a box for you uh, around retirement income planning strategies. So, and also doing like a personal retirement income analysis for prospects for free as well. So that wraps up the Art of the Rollover presentation. Again, uh, Marcus has a lot of great resources uh, for us, so feel free to contact out to him. I'll provide all that contact information at the end of the next presentation here, uh, which is talking around our journey index annuity. So, but again, I want to mention that there is an Art of the Rollover client presentation and essentially seminar and a box that we offer to you. So it's got the invites, flyers, materials, handouts, you name it. It's all right there. That's complimentary from Voya if you want to take advantage of that. All right, so let's transition. Now let's take a look at an, another product, our newest solution, and probably one of the most innovative design products for accumulation uh, in the industry today. 
So and that's our journey index annuity. So, and if you've had a chance to be on any uh, of the calls that we've done earlier in the year, when we initially launched this product back in January, uh, that Marcus uh, had me host, uh, you know, this is a really a great product for helping clients um, really, again, accumulate. That's really Voya's bread and butter is attracting that wealth accumulation product safety, you know, free of fees. This product features no caps, no spreads, just 100% participation and an additional crediting opportunity uh, while the index is maturing. Just have a few slides here for you of disclosure. Just a couple more here. All right, so the journey, again, is a truly innovative design to an index annuity. Uh, you will be uh, not able to find anything that's designed like this in the marketplace. The journey is featuring two dynamic managed indices from two very well-known uh, financial institutions in the United States with JP Morgan and Citibank. This product has the only two-stage approach to growing retirement savings. So the first stage is an annual performance interest credit through the first six years of the seven-year product. So what you have the ability to do is as long as the account or the index, I should say, is tracking cumulative annual performance year over year, then you will receive essentially a trigger credit into the account value. And then at the end of the seventh year, you get the entire growth, 100% participation of the selected indice you choose. Or you can do a combination of both, which is very popular to allocate 50-50. So all credits are based off the initial premium there. So it definitely credits simple interest, but don't be mistaken, that is not a weakness of this accumulation powerhouse. If you're taking some notes, here are some great bullet points um, to really kind of help you, you know, describe this uh, in a very quick manner. Uh, this is a, an annuity that has access to dynamic indices with very strong brand recognition. So clients are gonna know exactly who JP Morgan and Citibank is uh, when you talk about where you're you know, indexing for growth. You have every bit of growth potential that the index returns over the seven years. There's no spread, there's no cap, there's no fee, there's no renewal rates. Everything in this product is as is for seven years. You're not basing your decision off a first year rate. All these rates are same for the first seven years while it's in contract. Then you get that annual performance interest credit uh, you'll hear me refer to that as a pick. Depending on, you know, the person I'm talking to, I'll rather, you know, kind of analogize this as the same thing as a coupon to a bond or a dividend in a stock um, because it's basing it as long as there's performance inside of the index. And then you get that full tax deferral that you expect in an index annuity as well as the protection from market downturns. So here are some bullet points on really positioning this product against other type of product types. So when you look at the traditional fixed index annuity, uh, the traditional CD bond funds, and really the product that this was made in, in the image of, the MarketLink CD, you know, we've taken a look at a, essentially a 30 to $60 billion industry, which makes up MarketLink CDs, seeing their three biggest issues of phantom taxation, statement value going negative, and not really earning any accumulation while it's being held, and addressed every single one of them. So, and that's really the image that this was created in. So if you've had experience with clients that have purchased MarketLink CDs, been very upset with them, we actually essentially have the antidote of the same design, the same concept, but in a solution that works in a fixed index annuity chassis. That traditional fixed index annuity. So we're gonna offer you um, some transparency. The growth potential is really unmatched because there's no caps, no spreads. I mentioned no fees, no renewal rates. You get two stages of crediting that work together. Not the greater of the two, but they all work together to that accumulation value, plus very two dynamic indices. We're not just watching the stock market, we're actually taking investment principles into an index and applying that in a safe money solution. Traditional bank CDs really look obsolete compared to this because the growth potential is more exponential. So we offer liquidity and we offer tax deferral. So, and then, you know, bond funds, you know, the growth potential in a rising rate environment is there. It is 100% downside protected where bonds are not principal protected. They're typically safer, uh, you, know, you know, than going to stocks. Um, but, you know, they're not 100% immune, especially in a rising rate environment. And we're going to give them, again, the principal protection and tax deferral. So here is just a brief overview of the two indices, JP Morgan Meridian Index, 
So if you have any experience um, with the uh, Mosaic Index uh, that's out there, the, even the Mosaic 2 or the JP Morgan Efficiente, very similar investment principles, very similar design. Uh, the assets uh, that make up the investment choices or the investment universe are different. So, and then the city asset selector, this is a dynamic allocation. So uh, I use a comparison to uh, Allianz and their Barclays. They use uh, bonds and equities. We use futures of equities and treasuries. So both these were incepted uh, in 2016, but their investment principles and the assets that make up inside of there can be back tested um, to show what historical performance uh, would have been uh, if these indexes were created. So let's take a look at our first indice, the JP Morgan Meridian Index. So the Meridian Index seeks to provide steady and consistent performance using a very diverse multi-asset investment strategy. This index delivers a very strategic and selective basis for investing based on three well-known investment fundamentals. Asset allocation, where the index spreads the exposure across the diverse asset classes to optimize the performance of the index and manage risk. Market trend assessment, or momentum-based investing, is where the index selects the assets exhibiting the strongest performance trends based on the idea that these assets are more likely to continue to outperform the rest of the portfolio. And then risk parity or risk management is the other principle. So listen carefully here. This is where the index will weigh the assets to allow each of them that is selected to have an equal chance to drive its own performance and to manage risk from sudden market fluctuations. That's not just saying, well, it's equally balanced uh, or equally weighted and periodically rebalanced in there. No, each of them is managed and weighted based off of the potential volatility, the potential risk, so it can drive its performance equally and manage risk equally. Not equally weighting and automatically balancing. That's a little bit of an, you know, an archaic way uh, to look at that. So especially if you're going for passive management. So again, I mentioned there are 12 investment choices. Well, those are based out of four um, market sectors. You can see we have global equities from the S&P 500, the Eurostock, and the Hang Seng. Uh, we are very diverse when you look at the fixed income and the interest rate portfolio. Uh, and then we have some alternatives in there as well. And again, all of this has um, some global exposure. So the Meridian is using very disciplined rules to optimize the returns. So we have the investment principles. Now we have the rules that they're putting into place to really let this index drive on a daily basis. And this is very simple. So and again, if you've seen the mosaic, then this is going to look similar. If you've seen the mosaic too, again, very similar. It's the investment universe that is more diverse here. So each month, the index calculates six month performance of all 12 investment choices, a rolling six months. Then the index will select the top six investment choices with the highest positive performance. So if there's not six with positive performance, then it can only select all of those with positive performance. Then it determines the weighting. It'll strategically weight to optimize the portfolio's performance to drive those index returns. And then it's going to manage risk on a daily basis. Watching the portfolio, uh, making sure that really the, the index doesn't see any major market fluctuations. So how does this back test compare to the S&P 500 total return index? So you can see if you look at compounded annual returns, well, one, it's far less volatile. And two, it's almost the shadow when you look at the 4.5% compounded return versus the 4.07%. And one of the big objections that we get when someone's learning about the journey product is, well, what happens if the market just falls apart in that sixth to seventh year? So, and you really have, you know, to specify, well, what market are we talking about? Are we talking about the Dow Industrial? Are we talking about NASDAQ, the Russell, the S&P 500? And then most will say, well, the S&P 500, that's what index annuities are built around. Yes, that's correct. Most index annuity designs are built around just tracking the S&P 500. Well, 2008 would be a really good example of things just kind of falling apart, going to hell in a handbasket, so to speak. So the S&P 500 was down 38.49%. So if you take a look at um, the J.P. Morgan Meridian, now 0.62 basis points return, not setting the world on fire, but what it is is it's finding a growth opportunity 
in those other investments, and there's probably no to low correlation of is the S&P 500 constituent uh, inside uh, the index at any point in 2008? Probably not for as poor performing as it was throughout the year. There's other places to, for this to turn to, to uh, invest in the index. And I also want you to take a look at, uh, you know, those cumulative returns at the bottom. We can start looking uh, for seven-year cumulative returns where we have a full seven years of tracking, you know, of 2009, 36.66%, 26, and 2010, 29, 26, 30. And the year to date, the highest returning uh, through uh, 2016 through August, full seven years, 41.44%. If you wanted to put into um, terms of what this would look like from your standard design fixed index annuity on an annual reset, you would need that to return a compounded rate of 5.08% for seven straight years to get 41.44% growth uh, to that accumulation value. And there's still another stage of crediting that we haven't even looked at to enhance your returns. So just to give you an idea. So now what I want to do is I would like to show you um, an example of an actual illustration inside of our software of the Meridian. So what we have here is we have our historical seven. So the historical seven show the most recent seven years of the Meridian back tested. It shows the worst seven of 14 year period back tested and it shows the best seven of 14. And I really just want you to take a look at the worst. I think there's a lot of merit in looking at something when it's you know, at its cherry picked worst period where it could have possibly performed. And that's going to be looking at March 31st, uh, 2004 through March 31st, 2011. And you can see right out the gate, the index starts in a negative. There's no positive cumulative growth. It's actually down 2.62%. So when you think of the first stage of crediting that performance interest credit, there's nothing to be had there. But then you take a look at the next year. Okay, it, it grows out of its hole and then it has cumulative returns of over 11.5%. So we pay out the two and a quarter because there's growth now to the index. So uh, we don't reset the benchmark, but we still track the cumulative growth. Well, it's up another 59 basis points uh, over that time. So um, we, we add another two and a quarter. It's still got cumulative growth uh, in the fifth. And even in the sixth year, it's down year over year, but that's just a year over year change. It's still positive from where it initially started. So we apply that credit even though the change over the course of 12 months is down. And the sixth year, it's still up again uh, year over year. So it's cumulative growth. So you've gotten an 11.25% growth in the first uh, six years. So an 11.25% credit essentially based off your initial premium. Then we look at the seven-year total returns. What's up 23.83%. So when you add all that credit in together, that 23% uh, 23.83 percent credit plus your five performance interest credits you've got an average annualized rate of return just over five percent that's at its worst then you can look at the you know the best seven and it's averaging over 8.32 percent and if you want to think well if it happens somewhere in the middle let's say it's not eight it's not six, it's not five but it's 6.78 what kind of client is going to be up say where you can go out there and safely get them um you know 6.78% return opportunity and a no fee, no cap, no renewal rate. This is a true perfect buy and hold for accumulation products where you just can set that aside for the next seven years and let it do its work. So this is a, a really powerful story and really the only side of the, an illustration that I really ever use um, because it's very powerful. So let's get back here into the presentation here and let's talk about the City Dynamic Asset Selector 5. This is an access return index. The current S&P 500 environment that we're traditionally working with is the total return index. The difference is these are futures. So the city asset selector ide effectively identifies different market environments and dynamically address the, adjust the exposure between US equities and US treasuries, and that's futures. So the index will allocate exposure between the two components based off of historical trends and the volatility of equities. It's really all about smoothing the impacts of the major ups, the major downs in the assets to provide again, more stable returns. Take away the roller coaster ride and have just a nice escalator up. In times of sudden market fluctuations, assets inside of this index can become partially uninvested to future uh, reduce risk. 
So again, this is a dynamic allocation between you know, interest rate futures and equity futures. So when we're looking at market signals and volatility, just to give you an idea, uh, because we're look, doing a little bit more volatility management, so 15% is the magic number in volatility. If you go back to some of the other products out there, uh, Allianz with their great design of the Barclays, that's a 3% volatility fixation. So as they start making allocations to the safety mechanism. So, and the futures in here are meant to drive performance in both assets. So there's a lot more growth opportunity and you're gonna see that here in a little bit. But if it gets greater than 15%, you can move into a medium risk from a low risk. You're still in low risk at a 15% volatility. If it gets even higher than that, and there's downward performance, you can get into a high risk environment. And let's take a look at those speci specifically. A low risk environment is upward performance trend with low volatility, lower than 15%. So, and this is looked at on a daily basis. This is the tactical aspect of this. So every single day, City is, is he, in this strategy identifying those trends in the volatility. If it moves to a medium risk, you can still have upward performance, but you have greater than 15% volatility in the index, or in the equities, I should say. Or the volatility is still low, but now performance is trending downward. And then we do a 180. It's now two-thirds into treasuries and one-thirds into equities. So again, this is very transparent. It's either one or the other for medium to low. If it's high risk, you're 100% treasuries, so you have downward performance in, in, uh, in the volatility and in the equities, and it's extremely high volatility. So again, let's just lay that on the same timeline from a volatility perspective. Look at that compared to the S&P 500. It's the escalator versus the roller coaster ride. And it's actually outperforming the S&P 500 over the last 10 years. So you have the ability to be in front of a, a prospect client or a current client and have a solution that has been able to outperform the S&P 500 index over the last 10 years and provide that to them the entire growth over a seven year period. So again, what happens if things really go bad um, in you know, that sixth to seventh year? We'll look at 2008 again, negative 38% or positive 6.09. Now that's something to write home about, especially when you're looking at a safe investment. And that's important for two things. So there's really been one year in all of these where there's been negative you know, annual index returns. So, but when you're looking at that tracking without resetting the benchmark, as long as there's cumulative growth, you're still getting an interest credit based off of the performance interest. And then the highest seven-year cumulative period, you know, 48.88%. That same standard design fixed index annuity needs to perform at a 5.85% compounded rate every single year with renewal rates, with annual resets to derive the same performance. Oh, yes, and by the way, we still haven't added on the second way of growing accumulation with that because we have the annual performance interest credit. So let's go back in and look at the city from an illustration purpose. Again, we have the historical sevens. This is now the city. So calendar year, so the worst seven out of 14, the best seven out of 14. And again, let's focus on the worst seven. This is July 31st, 2002 through July 31st, 2009. So that fifth to sixth year, you know, you know we were in a great recession and this product is driving, you know, positive performance looking at it from July standpoint of over 5%. And it's actually crediting the performance credit every single year because it gets right out of the gate with positive performance. And there's cumulative growth year over year, even though between you know, three and four it was down, but that's just down year to year. The cumulative growth is still inside the index. And that's what's important in the power of this product of not having that annual reset, especially when you're tracking the total performance over seven years. So and then it's up 30 and a half percent essentially which makes it an average annualized rate of return over that seven years of 6.28%. So that's what a traditional design would have to do in a fixed index annuity that's subject to renewal rates, annual resets, picking the right strategy. This, you don't have to do any of that. And the most recent seven, 6.8, and in the highest seven, well, those numbers speak from themselves at 9.8%. So that's when, you know, this thing was at its best of May 31st, 06 uh, to 2013. So you can see again, every year, even 2008, two years into that, you know, five plus percent growth. A very, very po powerful, powerful story. So now I just want you to understand how interest is credited as we wrap this up. So, and this is really trying to illustrate you the no reset. So all these numbers are used for just basic explanation purposes. You have your index level at day one. Where is, you know, the Meridian or the city at that first level? Well, let's just assume it's at 100. So, and then at the end of each anniversary, we're gonna spot check what's the ending level, 
where is it at? So in the first year, it's 103. So that's up 3%. Yep, you get your pick. Your pick rate is 1%, so there's a $1,000 credit. The next year, there's no cumulative return. It's actually down 1% because it's actually truly in the hole. 99 is less than 100. So your principal protected for that year. There's nothing to credit. Then it's up 8%. The next year, it's down year over year, still up 7%. If we reset the benchmark you want you here, yeah, you would have two periods where you get no credit. So now you have essentially you know, an additional credit and that accumulation value. It's tracking 15% growth, 24% growth. So there's two additional credits again. You have you know, $5,000 already built up in that accumulation value just, just for your patients on watching the index return. Then at the end of the seventh year, the cumulative growth is 31%. So again, it is simple interest. So you have $31,000 credit to your account. So now you have a walk away of $136,000. So again, that's still 5.14% average annualized rate of return. And that's an extremely conservative way because you know, we have the ability to add another 13,500 with our current rates at two and a quarter. And that rate doesn't renew. So nothing changes. So when you buy it at two and a quarter performance interest credit and 100% participation, you know exactly what you have every year. So those client review meetings can be less focused on reselling them on the product because now things have changed from the first year when they bought it or the second year when it renewed or the third year where you can focus on some of those rollover opportunities that we talked about. Some of the other features, after the seventh year, honestly, the product has lost its benefit unless you're looking at legacy dollars and you wanna help your, your heirs stretch those assets down the road. But if you're a pre-retiree or a job changer, we well, still have time on the table. We can reposition those assets with the name journey I like to have a little fun with it. At the end of the seventh anniversary in the eighth year, Steve Perry has left the band and it's lost its appeal in my eyes. It's time to help your client reposition those assets. For you, it's making another sale. If there was another Voya product that worked well, maybe it's income planning now that's got a really strong income rider, Well, you could go ahead and utilize that. We'll pay you full compensation for internal transfer and you don't even have to sell them on a brand new carrier. Here is the uh, surrender period, seven years, 1% waterfall off the first year rate. So just want to show you the state of availability. Uh, besides New York, it's like cash. It's accepted everywhere. So we now have all 49 states that we uh, get products approved in available for you. So with that, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Marcus, for letting me come on and speak. If you do have additional questions, whether if it's the art of the rollover presentation or the journey product or even both, please contact Marcus uh, at IMS at 800-255-50. Five, five. And with that, Marcus, I turn it back over to you. Yeah, I certainly do appreciate that, Brett. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, open up the question poll. If anyone has any questions, we'll uh, certainly address those or answer those for you. Uh, I'm also going to throw uh, one more poll out there. If you want uh, contracting uh, or information or additional information on Voya, uh, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to follow up with you on that. Uh, but I do appreciate uh, Brett uh, taking time this morning and covering that information on the journey product and the art of the rollover. I don't show any questions out there uh, this morning. Uh, I do appreciate everyone uh, answering the question on the poll and taking time to listen in. Um, we do have uh, uh, one question on the uh, the commissions. Uh, do you want to cover that real quick, Brett, on the, the yeah. street level comp on the journey product? Yeah, street level comp on the journey. So it's seven year product. It's four and a half percent street level commission. And there are trails. Any trails? Yeah, there are trails. So there are there are four options that you can take a look at on the commission alternatives. I apologize, I don't have those in front of me right now, but you can do an A, B, C, or D. Uh, I'm going to tell you um, that D or A are the options that are chose because I remember correctly, an eight basis point or a 12 basis point trail on B and C are not much. Um, I believe it's 80 basis points on option D, so it's a little bit more uh, enticing. And I can will reduce your first year upfront. Yeah, and I can certainly cover that further with you on that as far as trails go, if that is what you're interested in. Um, any other questions this morning? If not, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, close this out. Like I said, I appreciate everyone taking some time to listen in this morning, and I will certainly follow up with each and every one of you after this webinar. Um, I appreciate it, Brett. Thank you. Yep, thank you, Marcus, and thank you, everybody, for taking your time to listen today. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.